react to video We'll say just what we see Let's react, react, react with me Hello, come and join me reacting to my friend Arbiter Ian's video on the Emperor's Children in the Horus Heresy. Um, Ian and I are reading the Horus Heresy and he teased me for wearing my purple Wonkers hoodie, saying that I was a fan of the Emperor's Children. I don't know a lot about them, um, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. They do bad things in Horus Rising and they don't have much good rap as far as I've heard. So imagine my surprise when I saw Quipster Nerd had painted a little purple evil emperor's child and even given them a name and like a backstory. So I kind of challenged Quipster and I was like, why do you like this Legion? And he was about to go into a long detailed spin of why he liked them. But I said, stop, I'm going to let you come on my channel and tell me why they're good, which he's going to do. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to take this opportunity to learn as much as I can about them and really give him a fair hearing. As you know, if you want any Warhammer lore, Arbiter Ian is the only and best channel. So we're going to watch it together and let's react together. OK, let's go. The Emperor's Children in Warhammer 40k are one of the most well-known Chaos Space Marine legions, and their story stretches back to the very earliest appearance of Chaos in the 40k setting, a legion of noise... Okay, immediately no. This looks incredibly messed up. Look at this dude. Has big, uh, long teeth and, like, uh, horrible nail teeth underneath and loads of tentacles. This does not look good. This looks like a really, really gone to seed space marine. I don't like it. Marines and hedonists who worship Slanesh, the god of excess. But their origins. Oh, wait, is that Slanesh or was that a space marine? The story couldn't have been more different. Starting out as the most loyal of legions, paragons of martial honor, and ambassadors of the Imperium. The story of the Horus Heresy, amongst other things, is the story of their fall. Yay, theme song. I can't remember what happened to the title card on this one, but Ian has got the coolest theme song. Hi, uh, welcome to Heresy 101. In this little series, I'm gonna go through the background for each of the Space Marine Legions of the Horus Heresy. I'll take a look at what- Yay, and Ian and I have been reading the Horus Heresy, starting with Horus Rising. Where they are at the start of the Heresy and how they got there, what happens to the- See, this is more of this is much nicer than the last Space Marine we saw. Nice plume. Interestingly, it's like a horizontal kind of rainbow plume rather than the forward facing Roman ones. A cat's eye belt buckle. And then you've got an eagle. Yep. I don't know who the man is on the little cloth below. Maybe someone can tell me. Them during the heresy, and in this case, how it turned a once loyal legion into the debased group of chaos warbands we know from 40k. Anyway, before I start, this video contains spoilers for the Horus Heresy Black Books and... We know, Ian, but we were taking this risk and we will learn with you. And yay, we did read um, Dan Abnett's Horus Rising together. You can uh, see that on Ian's channel where we discuss it, or my channel where we talk to Dan. Also the Black Library novels, obviously. The treachery of the Horus Heresy took place in the closing years of the Emperor's Great Crusade, as the forces of the Imperium pushed outwards from Terra in an attempt to unify the... Oh, this looks really cool, doesn't it? These ships are gigantic, and I know they're not space crystals, but I'm imagining the things in the background are space crystals. ...galaxy, and this constant push outwards served as a cover for Horus and the rest of the traitor legions to plot their rebellion. See, this is not okay. There is a space marine with a wolf. Is that a dead wolf on its armour? So, knew they were named after the wolves. Not really sure why they would need to have that. Also, the eyes. Um, are they wolf's eyes? That must be Horace talking to another Primarch. Um, so, I wonder if that is the Mornival. Yeah, I'm not feeling the dead wolf, not feeling that at all. 
But by the time the civil war finally broke out, the slow fall of the emperor's children had already begun. Their Primarch, once a vision of noble perfection, possessed by a demon. Oh, so their Primarch actually turns into like a proper demon with wings and horns. Well, that's what I learned from the Eisenhorn books, that if you do mess around with chaos, you can become one. Like I think about the demon slight um, that started out as one of Ravenna's um, buddies. So yeah, gosh, it looks like this Primarch's turned into a proper demon. Wings, scorpion tail, additional limbs, horns, the lot. And their bodies being twisted by their apothecaries into more and more distorted caricatures of what they once were, which is... See, if you had the opportunity to join any legion and you were like, oh, this legion will make me look deformed like Skeletor, I just wouldn't join that legion. Ironic. As at the start of the Great Crusade, that sort of physical corruption was exactly what they were trying to avoid. The history of the Third Legion, like all the legions, starts in the latter years of the Unification Wars, as the Emperor slowly conquered Ooh. Old Earth. While oh, this is Old Earth, so it's actually on Earth. And this is fascinating. Look, it says America. <laughs> America. Ger Germany, spelt with a J. Safric, hi Brazil, hive cities of the lands of the Indoi. How interesting. Oh, this is a bit mad actually for me. While the first legion, later the Dark Angels, were proving the might of the new Astartes pattern and haven't come across the Dark Angels yet. Full scale conflicts across the planet, the rest of the legions were being slowly. This legion is so old, it's black and white. He he he, no idea who these are. I'd love to know what these icons down the side are. Brought up to fighting strength and early examinations of the third legion notes their noble bearing. Ten this is a bit mad, actually. I'm seeing, it looks like loads of historic documents about old terror and this seems like a schematic for space marines. This is actually quite thrilling because I'm on Horus Heresy, which I thought was historic. But these kind of illustrations seem to be like even more historic than that even. So this is kind of cool. I haven't seen any of this stuff. Yeah, very cool. Tendency towards martial perfection. Just have to say, part of why Ian's videos are so good is because he does all these graphic overlays and you get to see cool stuff like this. ...and disciplined ordered minds. The only genetic flaws being a tendency towards albinism and occasionally violet irises. To so, no problem with violet irises. In fact, I believe the unicorn Amalfia in my favourite book, The Last Unicorn, had violet irises. As did um, uh, Eisenhorn. Um, Eisenhorn has violet eyes and I think it's very attractive. I was known in the early noughties to wear violet contact lenses and very cool. Don't know what albinism is. To the new recruits of the Third Legion, this was hardly a surprise. They have been raised from the noble families of old Europa, sending their firstborn sons as penance for their resistance to the Imperium. In fact, they were noted to be refined and glorious right from the start clad in armour, covered in golden thunderbolts and rays of sunlight. And See, armour clad in golden thunderbolts and rays of sunlight, I could get behind that. But doesn't this image look like there's a big space marine, like kind of pulling the arms of a little skinny person with like a triangular beard? Let me out! Maybe that's just me. <laughs> and their initial deployments, when there were only a few of them, were often as an officer corps for mortal troops being split up to provide morale-boosting command elements to the rest of the Emperor's armies. It was this heritage, as well as their status as obvious favourites amongst the legions, that led to them becoming known as the Emperor's children. And as the early crusades started to move away from terror... Okay, so if you're the Emperor's favourites, you get called the Emperor's children. I did feel like in Horus Heresy they were saying that Horus was the favourite son. But maybe maybe that's in dispute or maybe this is different timelines. Era, that reputation was cemented. It was their dogged defence of the Emperor alongside the Custodes on Proxima that led to them being honoured with the right to wear this, the Palatine Aquila, that's the one with the pointy up wings, on their armour. Sorry, let's just go back. So... Uh, Palatine Aquila, Emperor Palatine, Palpatine, no, I'm just saying, I know it's not right, has got pointy up wings. And also I love that Ian's like, probably this one. <laughs> so good.
wear this, the Palatine Aquila, that's the one with the pointy up wings, on their armour. Probably For many, they were the voice of the Emperor, accompanying diplomatic missions as bodyguards and emissaries and carrying the Imperial Standard. But before the Crusade really got underway, disaster struck. During the genesis of the Astartes project, the Primarchs, the generals and genetic templates of the legions, had been scattered across the galaxy. Without the Primarchs around, the gene seed used to create each space marine... Here's the thing, gene seeds. Maybe one of my least favourite things, just for the ick factor, that you have a gene seed that makes you who you are, and when you die, if you're an Astartes, when you die, it will be taken out and planted in someone else. It just makes me feel really, really ill. This is a really interesting diagram. I'm not going to look too closely because it might gross me out, but ata at anatomy astartes. Was there you go. was less stable and more prone to failure. Near the end of the unification of Terra, it was discovered that the Third Legion's gene seed reserves had become infected by a viral blight. That, despite the best... So your gene seed bank can be blighted. That's kind of gross. Like at what, the potato blight? Or like when you get weevils in your flower? That makes me feel bad for them. Best efforts of the Emperor's scientists infected and destroyed the entire batch. That's the only sad. gene seed left was that growing in the augmented bodies of the Third Legion warriors. Gross. This is what I was talking about. This is what this illustration is. If that's an apocryphy, nice callback to the plague masks of the Black Plague doctors, if that's what it is. And that wasn't enough to keep pace with the growth the crusade required. As the rest of the legions built their strength and led expeditionary forces out into the dark, the emperor's children dwindled. They were saved by a stroke of luck. Early in the crusade, their primarch, Fulgrim, was discovered on the grey and rocky industrial world of Chemos. Well, what was he doing there? Would he get lost? It's a big old galaxy, I suppose. Chemos was slowly sinking into obscurity, but Fulcrum had risen to rule the world as a figure of hope, introducing a renaissance of technological and artistic advances and intellectual refinement. Let's just have a check out of that fit. Look at the knee, um, the knee pads. They're screaming mouths. And it looks like fulgrim has got a big ruby. There's a bird friend coming along. Look at that beautiful white hair. It reminds me of Raceylin from Dragonlance. This is more like it. This, this is very cool. Fulcrum's like a rock star, right? A renaissance of technological and artistic advances and intellectual refinement. It was this hope he brought to the Third Legion when their 200 remaining Legionnaires first met him. Kneeling, he promised them a new start, telling them of their destiny and to shake off the misfortunes of the past. The Third Legion were officially renamed the Emperor's Children. See, here we've got the uh, the head feathers facing forward again. And the Emperor's Children, I think that's a good name. If Again, I don't know. Is that the Emperor on the little tea towel around the waist? Not sure. But yeah, interesting, like the skulls, you can see they have little skull features. I now I know, I have now been told by the whole internet that if you're a Space Marine, you're most definitely going to be wearing skulls and adopted the Imperial Purple and Palatine Aquila as their uniform. Ah, so the Emperor's colour is purple, or the Imperium? Okay. I thought the Emperor was golden. Anyway, these colours seem to be changeable, so let's go. Let's just go. In practical terms, the rediscovery of Fulgrim allowed for faster reproduction of gene seed, and the Legion slowly began to grow again. Until it reached fighting strength, though, Fulgrim and the Third were seconded to the Lunar Wolves under the command of Horus, and the two became good friends. Oh, now this, someone was chatting in Discord about, this might be a famous picture of Hor Horus um, walking down the stairs. Again, there's a whole wolf on his blooming shoulders, which I do not like, but he looks very regal here. Um, again, with the wolf eyes, I guess. Um, yeah, so this is really interesting. I guess this might be a really famous bit of artwork. Um, yep. Friends, each of their legions complementing the other. With this change in fortunes, and as they started to accrue battle honours, the Emperor's children, knowing they had some catching up to do, rebuilt their pride. A passionate intensity filled them. They studied the tactics of the other legions, attempting to excel at the same skills, channeled all their energies into training in specific arts of... Whoa, now that is cool. That is very cool. Jetpack Emperor's children. War until that... Jetpack! <laughs> How dangerous do you want to go? Jetpack, 
Not only a jetpack, I want to have a bolter gun and a chainsaw. I want to die today. Training consumed them. <laughs> Eventually, they grew large enough to lead their own expeditions, but they were never the most numerous of legions. They couldn't afford to waste numbers in wars of attrition, so instead they refined their tactics. Whoa. Now this, this is a whole dude with two jet engines strapped to him. That's like going on holiday and there is like an Astartes under the wing. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely going to... To, you're going to scorch your heels at least with those powerful engines strapped to you. But how cool. This looks very cool. Yes, I can see I would be tempted to paint a mini with those on its back. Continued to study and came to rely on speed, mobile assault and perfectly planned and timed attacks. But over time, this all came... I bet they were like the red arrows in their day. ...at a price and pride and resentment came to pollute their nobility. The only measure of achievement is to measure oneself against others. When another legion was honoured, it was said that they took it both as a spur to, to do, do better, better and a wound, wound to the emperor's, emperor's children's pride. pride. When they failed to reach the quality of another, it created jealousy. jealousy. When they did excel, it bred contempt for those they'd risen above. And no, no matter, matter how, how high they, they rose, rose, no matter, no matter how, how much they achieved, it was, it was never, never enough. enough. The achievements Oof. of the past were dead to them. Their hunger for perfection was without limit and could, and could never, never be, be sated. The atrocities that had come later demonstrate this assessment. But the, but the signs, signs were there long, long before, before they, they fell. fell. And Oof. fall they did. By the end of the crusade, the Empress' children had rebuilt their forces and were deployed at Leran in a war of extermination. So here now we've got the plumes, but they're more of like a kind of a big pluming, long feathery thing. And they, the collars have gone very, very high. I know this. <laughs> I know that this is probably not the commentary we need, but I am noticing the fashion choices. So apologies. Nation against the Xenos Lair. However, their pursuit of perfection had already led portions of the Legion down a dark path. The diligence of their apothecaries occasionally turning to a desire to improve upon the Emperor's. So the apothecaries are coming along, trying to fix people and thinking. I could do a better job than the Emperor. I'm going to have a fiddle with the DNA. Okay, that sounds terrible. Also, um, this is really interesting. So this must be an Apocathory, a medical space marine. And it's really interesting to see that the signal, um, you can see on their uh, shoulder, they have the medical sign that we're used to in our universe, the snakes and then the feathers at the top. But of course, because it's Warhammer, there is a skull at the top. Love it. Love it. Also, wonder what this little tassel is off the belt. Template, a practice that increased throughout the early stages of Horus's war against the war singers of Istvan. As the heresy became apparent, illicit modifications had been performed on a number of the Legion's command staff, and Fulgrim himself had become corrupted by a Laran demon blade. The Note to anyone scavenging in the 40k universe probably best if you find any type of weapon that seems to be really good don't pick it up there will be a demon in it Empress children's fall to chaos started well before the rest of the heresy so at the start of the heresy the empress children were estimated at around 110,000 legionnaires but the opening battle on istvan 3 where the initial four traitor legions purged their ranks of loyalists cost the legion greatly maybe knocking them down to around 60,000. These were ordered extremely precisely according to the tenets of the Principia Bellicosa, with each legionnaire aware of exactly where he stood in the hierarchy of the legion. And while these clear lines of command were useful when executing the third's famously precise and complex battle plans, they could also lock officers and troopers into their allotted roles, creating almost a noble class within the legion. Each So it was a bit like upstairs, downstairs, Downton's Abbey in The Empress Children. And yeah, that would be be really awful. Even if there were only 60,000 troops, if you were in the lowest rung of those troops, <gasps> talk about grimdark. Each squad was expected to excel in one specific area of warfare. And though the Legion contained every sort of formation commonly used by... Okay, so this looks like a tank, but the conveyor belt goes all the way around the top, even the top which looks really cool, but imagine if you were going through a lot of mud, that would be so messy. You'd literally get mud everywhere. It would probably block your guns, the mud. By the Astartes, some weapons and tactics were valued more highly than others. The Emperor's children valued speed and skill above all else. And so okay, come on now, that is cool. <laughs> That's cool. 
Do they all get those? They're like kind of like motorbikes in space, speed bikes, like um, Star Wars speed racers. I'll stop talking and just listen. Some land speeders were common, as were commands. Land speeders. Staff versed in logistics and planning. The specializations expected of every squad led to some unique and feared units, such as the Sun Killers, Laz Cannon equipped heavy weapon squads, or the Palatine Blades that formed out of the Legion's tradition of honor duels. In fact, dueling was a huge deal for the Emperor's children, as was skill with a blade. That's interesting they talk about dueling, because wasn't there a space marine from the emperor's children in horus heresy on the spider planet he went mad for sword fighting i can't remember his name that's annoying but anyway yeah one of the emperor's children basically began to fight all these arachnid xenos using a sword instead of his blaster and that kind of makes sense if this legion love a, a duel blade in general and the taking of blades as trophies from defeated enemies was encouraged. As the heresy ground on, this rigid perfection started to fracture. The Emperor's children were one of the legions dug in at Istvan V, where the possessed Fulgrim killed his brother and friend, Ferris Manus of the Iron Hands. After the Ferris Manus of the Iron Hands. I don't know who the Iron Hands are, but Ferris Manus. That's a good name. Ferris, Ferris as in iron. I 100% bet you that's why he's called Ferris. This, the Emperor's <laughs> children started to lose cohesion as their legionnaires gave in to their own desires. As the legion fell to Slanesh, its warriors turned into glory seekers or fell to... In Sorry, did you just see how gross this is? There is a hand... Just with the end blasted off. What in the Robocop is this? And what are they doing with that banner? Are they tearing it down? Anyway. The Legion fell to Slanesh. Its warriors turned into glory seekers or fell to indiscriminate excess as part of cults like the Cacophony, the precursors. Oh, this is interesting. So the notes here say remembrances, renditions of anomalous Empress children support units based upon various picked captures. That's so cool, because um, we're just reading about the remembrances. And it's, yeah, so this conceit is that it's a sketch drawing. And again, if you were in a unit where you could end up looking like this, wouldn't you just go and try and join a different unit? I don't know, I don't know if that's allowed, probably not. So the noise marines, some of the more organized- Noise Marines, I love that, like they've got ghetto blasters and heavy metal. Most parts of the Legion fought running battles against the White Scars, attempting to delay their journey to terror, but Fulgrim himself, even having con- Fulgrim, 100% rock star, look at that. Conquered his possession, quit the crusade for a while for a pilgrimage into the Eye of Terror, where he tricked his brother Pertur- <gasps> He went into the Eye of Terror. So the Eye of Terror, I believe, is that huge kind of warp, rip rift rip in the sky like why would you ever want to go in there you are not coming out looking <laughs> looking lovely you're coming out probably you know with the wings and the scorpion tail and the horns Bravo of the iron warriors and used part of his life force to achieve apotheosis as a demon prince of slanesh apotheosis that must mean the transcending the changing of becoming a demon look there are the horns the four horns we notice and the wings by the time the Emperor's children arrived at the Siege of Terror, they were totally changed. A horde of cultists and noise marines that assaulted the palace with weight of numbers, heedless of casualties. But after Rogaldorn defeated Fulgrim... Rogaldorn! Rogaldorn, I summon you! It's a great name. Look at this shiny armour. So the Siege of Terror, I'm coming to understand, is when all the bad, chaotic space marines, probably the her heresy... Uh, probably the ones led by Horus, um, came to attack Terra, which is where the Emperor is. Was he asleep then? Which is where the Emperor was. So this dude must be protecting the Emperor. I don't know. I think I'm piecing it together. I could be completely wrong, but it's kind of fun figuring it out like this. Grim at the Satinine Wall, the Emperor's children quit the siege and rampaged through the civilian population. Look at them little hooligans. This is just like, you know, I don't know if if you've been reading the book of Boba Fett, watching the book of Boba Fett, but like they had tearaways around the town on their mod uh, type uh, motor. Uh, I'm going to stop talking again. <laughs> Pursuing their own desires for excess before fleeing off world and into the eye of terror. 
and that's the Third Legion. Their initial position as paragons of imperial might and their obsessive desire to prove themselves after the gene seed blight turned them into prideful, arrogant perfectionists mm. willing to go to any lengths to improve, and this left them wide open to corruption by Slanesh. Their rigid lines of command and obedience to their betters made them easy to lead into that corruption. And in the end, they were a pale shadow of the old legion, a carnival of cultists with no higher motive than their own excess. I like how Ian said a pale shadow and then showed a space marine all like amped up like this, but in a pale pink rather than a purple. And also, yeah, really interesting, I guess, if you're prideful and arrogant and you're you obey orders and you're locked into these kind of feudal uh, troop uh, tiers. Yeah, I guess if one's going to go, they're all going to go like dominoes, right? And that's how we know them in 40k. The Empress children are an interesting legion to play in heresy because they changed so much within the course of it. And you can pick any point in there for your army. Mine are most definitely from the very end of that story. Ian, I love how your troops look haggard. They've been through a lot. And yeah, I love all the little nuances and crazy colours. Um, yeah, cute and kind of pinky rather than purple, which I'm here for. Anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, that was so good. I love, I have to say, I love watching Ian's videos, but it is so much more fun being in the room with Ian and just quizzing him. So definitely we'll have to quiz Ian. But I've got a lot of good information there, enough to kind of challenge Quipster Nerd as to why the heck he thinks they're good, they're fun to play. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I just wanted to let Ian's patrons get their, um, their names on the screen. But yeah, um, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, it is really fun learning about things in this way, bit by bit, piecing things together. Thanks for watching. Um, please answer any questions. Tell me what I got wrong in the comments. If you hung around this long, thank you. You're awesome. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Let's react to video. We'll say just what we see. Let's react, react, react with me.